We got to the campsite a little bit late, but the next day, the drives through the mountain were absolutely gorgeous. We had a small drive to get to where we were going. We decided to go to the adventure park to explore some caves and to do a mountain coaster. How's the roof looking? <laughs> Okay, so uh, guys, we're going to start at the very beginning of that, like as far as human history in this cave goes. Uh, this all started in 1895. Now we had a landowner, his name was uh, Ch uh, Charles Darrow, not Clarence Darrow. I mean, they were, you heard Clarence Darrow, they were related, they were cousins. But at the same time period, like 1895, uh, Mr. Darrow uh, owned the top of this mountain. Now one uh, August afternoon that year, he and a buddy were cruising about, come across a... Uh, a hole in the ground that uh, was had a great deal of air passing through enough to cause a whistling sound. Now this hole they had previously seen and thought it was a badger hole, but on this day with that air coming out, they got really curious, decided to uh, open it up. They got some hand tools, uh, picks, etc., and just had to widen it a little bit enough so that Mr. Darrow could fit in. Now he ended up uh, emerging or actually falling into the cave right where the photographer was when she uh, took your picture. I don't know if you guys saw an opening, but that's where he fell in. Dad was just wide, 12 feet off, and here he discovered this cave. Now, he was a pretty entrepreneurial guy. Um, like I said, he was attorney down below, but uh, he also thought, well, he's going to start cave tours here. And he was aiding the fact that at Glenwood Springs at this time, uh, you know, they had a pretty bustling tourist operation going on anyhow because they had the uh, Sulphur Hot Springs down below, okay? So he already had an influx of uh, customers. <coughs> and then also they had a, a dynamo on the river. They're generating... Uh, DC current off to Colorado. Here we got a couple pieces of wood jammed into the run, right? So, yeah, they're putting those in, kind of uh, getting cracks, put, uh, building little holes. in 1897 he uh, did notice this ledge uh, there there was a flat ledge here we've leveled it out a little bit more but there's a, a notch here on this rock face and he elevation wise so uh, he, uh, he commissioned some miners back in 1897 to start on this tunnel okay <coughs> that last 125 feet we went through is man-made so uh, they started and it took them three years so they completed that in 1900 and then at that time uh, they included this as part of the cave tour and they had this beautiful view, okay? And uh, this was pretty much the end of the tour. Their extent, uh, their knowledge of the cave was, uh, didn't extend as far as ours does right now. So this was about it. They paid that 50 cents. They came to the top of the mountain. Went about as far as we went and that was it. And then to make it worse. 50 cents though. <laughs> That's a lot of money. Mm -hmm. 
this. <laughs> we came through now about another 20 feet of tunnel, right, man made. Okay, now in 1950, uh, this was a solid rock wall. Okay, those guys went up that thing we looked at, looked like a goonie slide on the other side. And they ended up coming out here by that starfish-shaped rock, okay? And it wasn't easy. I know they had to remove a lot of stuff because for 55 years nobody knew this room was here. miles of the cave that's mapped out. Like I mentioned earlier, we're going to go over like a quarter mile loop in this section, okay? And besides a little bit in the bottom, those are the only improved parts, as in, you know, they put in a nice level floor so we could walk on it. They may have uh, lowered it a little bit. And the big thing is they put lights in. Now, without these lights in that other three and a quarter mile of cave, you're going to have, you know, you don't have to bring a candle. We have LEDs now, but you still get a similar picture. You've got this, uh, this kind of circular field of illumination. Uh, but everything else around you is going to be dark. You know, if you hear screaming or growling coming from the corner, you're going to have to divert your light source, you know, wherever you want to see it. You know, consciously keep looking ahead, otherwise you might uh, bang yourself or fall into a crevasse or something like that. But uh, anyway, just give you an idea of what it looks like. Uh, now, we need to put all the glowing things out if we can. And go from the side, but uh, that's just a, an indication that, you know, we have water taking a new path through here, you know, 100 years or so, who knows. But uh, gave us that. And then here's something else that's kind of cool. This deal here. Uh, these rocks are phosphorescent, so. Uh, let's check this out. Oh. 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 Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Anyway, did all these kids see this stuff? Look at this stuff. You see that? Yeah. All right. So now that we've seen all that, we're gonna turn the lights back on if I can find the switch. And uh, super cool. interesting is that when you do go down there and they show you the red light because yeah. the red lights were the guys who discovered it where they came out this is where they started but to that first landing look to the right that's the path they took there are air currents coming out of here that made them go in there and take go through really 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 tight stuff that nobody was and this is when these guys started to discover the lower area sorry, sorry. you can see with your other portion of your ticket or, or with your wristband and then they're going to tell you about a place called jam crack it's down here and then eventually Brings you to the lower cave. Oh, okay. Cool. Well, that's how they it's like discovered it. Peanut butter poop. Peanut yeah, butter it's, poop. It's, it's, uh, Nope. You're, 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 Do you want to crush it? Holy moly. To keep a track of the temperature and the humidity here in your wrap. It's always going to be about 52. So if you guys come on down to the platform, take a moment to pick up the two formations beyond the rail. 
This one beyond the, the uh, corner of the rail here. Above us, they call this dude the Cheeto. Looks like a big Cheeto. And to the left and beneath us, you see formation. They call it the Oscar. As it drips, it builds the formation and it also erodes it away. Step behind me. Yeah. You guys start filling up the second row, please. Oh, Bill, right to the left the side. The Is there a field? Just take one more step down uh, behind there. Oh, I'm up on the way. Move. 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 This collection of stones in the middle, in particular, gives the entire gallery its name. This is the King's Row. It looks like the back row of the chess board. You see those two towers on the side, the rooks, and the bishop in the middle of the plane. To the left of the king's row, you're going to see the king of the board himself right here. And the king is a geologic column. That's where a stalactite and a stalagmite have come together. And uh, he's called the king because he does have an his rock walls will emanate uh, a ghostly green glow for a second. If you'd like to see this, please do dim any competing light sources. Your phones will not be able to take a photo of this. It's just, in just a second, apparently. Our next destination as a group is going to be the wait here platform that we paused at on the way down the steps. So I'll see you all at that concrete platform here platform in just a moment. Guys, the roller coaster one more time. I'm not right, like five more times, but. Five more times. <laughs> they said no phones on the ride, but. <clears throat> I just needed to get the capturing end view. <sighs> so I have been living in this RV for almost four weeks now. I've been living in the RV in the snow in Colorado. I'm currently on one of those weekend getaways. We came out here to Rifle, Colorado. Yesterday, we spent the night in Glenwood Springs. We tried to find a really cool parking spot. There was some BLM land, but unfortunately it was too snowy and our rig was a little too big, so it just didn't seem like a good spot for us. So we went into the city and found another place in the city for us to park. Another place that was free on iOverlander. We are currently parked up in the mountains right now. We found a really cute spot that was a nice pull off that I don't know if it was on iOverlander. Our friend sent us the coordinates and they should be here shortly. They spent their day going on a hike and they went to Glenwood Springs while we went to the adventure park, as you guys saw and did the gondola. So it's in a really eventful day. I'm glad that we're here at a spot before sunset. That is something that we have not been very good at. Every single time we go camping, we don't always end up at our spot before the sun sets. Indy currently has the zoomies. Indy! <laughs> I am literally in such a beautiful space right now. <sighs> Well, being a travel phlebotomist is not always fun, especially when you're working five days a week. These moments are what make it really worth it. There's a really big truck coming. Indy, come here, baby. <laughs> Can you sit? Hi, baby. But while travel phlebotomy is not always fun and games, it is really cool that I get to spend my weekends adventuring around whatever state I'm in. I really am so thankful to be here in the mountains. It's so beautiful and I was a little nervous that my rig wasn't going to be able to make it to more remote spots. And while that is true for really, really off grid, I think that we have gotten some pretty cool spots already. 
But yeah, I will keep you guys updated and take you on the next adventure. I'm really excited to drive home. The drive yesterday into Glenwood Springs was completely pitch black because we literally left Evergreen at nighttime. So I'm super excited to see what terrain we missed because I know it was beautiful. <laughs> Indy is an ice eater. All right, Indy, I want some hot chocolate. Let's go inside. <laughs> Still eating ice.